How to build the Black Gates Twin Steam Engine, Part 13. Coupling the engines together, is it going to work? There are a couple of things that have been bothering me. My first attempts at getting them to couple was a failure. This time it may or may not be a failure. I've turned one of the engines round and fitted an extended crank pin to it. Now I'm going to make a catch plate so that the first engine's crank pin can drive the second engine. And I'm going to make this from a piece of one inch diameter phosphor bronze. Here it is fitted into the chuck of my Boxford lathe and these days, almost an autopilot, I take the usual cut across the front of the work to square it up. This is followed by using a centre drill, followed by a twist drill, which is one imperial size less than the size that I want it to be. And the size that I want it to be is a quarter of an inch in diameter. And to make sure this hole is accurately sized, I'm going to use a reamer. And here it is. Generally speaking, in the home workshop, if you ream too fast, the hole will be too big. So I've put the lathe in back gear to slow it down, and as you can see, it's a success. The hole is a perfect fit for this quarter inch shaft. In this clip, I'm parting off the piece of phosphor bronze and refitted it into the chuck. I'm refinishing this end of the work because this is the one that was parted off and the finish wasn't brilliant. I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper just to remove the sharp edges. I've mentioned many times before in these videos that a perfect 90 degree angle on a piece of metal is razor sharp. So I'm using the wet or dry sandpaper just to dull the edge. I need one end of the phosphor bronze to be the same size as the hub on the flywheel. For no other reason than appearance's sake. And as before, I'm not forgetting to remove the sharp edges with the piece of wet or dry sandpaper. This clip shows the phosphor bronze part fitted onto the shaft of the rear engine. What I need to do now is mill a slot in this part. I could drill a hole exactly the same distance from the crankshaft to the crank pin. I showed in an earlier episode my original plan for coupling the engines together and it really didn't work. Alignment of the engines was fairly difficult. By machining a slot, it will make up for any slight misalignment. As you can see in this clip, I just didn't dive in with the milling cutter. I'm taking quite a lot of very fine cuts. Like most of my milling cutters that are generally buying job lots from eBay, this one is not the right size, it's metric. But that's not altogether a bad thing because not only can I get a better finish on the slot, by taking some very fine cuts, it will end up at the size that I want it to be. After the milling operation, I put the part back in the lathe, mainly to clean off the burrs left by the milling cutter. The finished slot in the phosphor bronze part is 3 16 of an inch in diameter, and as you can see, it is exactly that because it will actually fit on the shaft and hold itself in place. All I need to do now is drill the part for a grub screw. First of all, I sight up the position by eye, and that's okay because this is not a critical component, it's only for a grub screw. Then, as always, the normal procedure start with a center drill, then drill a hole one eighth of an inch in diameter, which is tapping size for 4BA. And after brushing away all the chippings left by the drilling operation, it's a good idea to start off the tapping with the part still in the drilling machine in the same position as it was drilled. Turning the chuck is a bit laborious, so I took it out of the chuck and finished it off by hand with a tap wrench. In this clip, I'm fitting a long 4BA grub screw, and this will hold the part securely to the crankshaft. Before fitting the other engine in position, I think a bit of oil in the slot is a good idea. In this clip, I'm bolting the front engine into position on the base plate, and now I've connected my electric drill to the crankshaft to see what happens and just bed the engines in. Initially everything looked and sounded okay and the engine ran very well, but I really am not happy with this at all. I just have a feeling that this arrangement, although it works okay, is going to fail in service. In this clip I'm showing the clearance in the slot and as you can see, it's okay. Now I'm going to connect a compressed air supply to the rear engine. There's enough power in the rear engine to drag the front engine, plus I can put quite a lot of pressure on the flywheel. These engines are surprisingly powerful. And therein lies the other problem. Just one of these Blackgate's twin engines will easily power a six foot boat. And when I connect an air supply to the front engine as well, and run them as a pair, 
The power is quite astonishing, but it's too much for the crank pin that's linking them together. I currently have about £30 per square inch going into this engine, and the amount of pressure I'm putting on the flywheel is quite a lot. I'll just tighten up these oilers before they vibrate loose. They're only finger tight and fitted temporarily. And I really am starting to think that a quad engine, although it looks pretty good, is not going to be a practical proposition. It would be okay if it was just a little brass engine, like a toy engine, but with a thing like this that is truly powerful for its size, it's not going to last long. And I was right. Very soon the engine with the extended crank pin started to leak where the cylinders meet the port face. And the only thing that can be causing that to happen is a bent crank pin. I removed this engine with the extended crank pin from the bed plate and when I looked at it in detail, the crank pin was definitely bent and that's only after 20 minutes running with me simulating a load on the front engine. The crank pin drive principle works especially in such engines as the old Cheddar Models ones and SVS type engines. But these engines are far too strong. In this clip I'm running them individually. As you can see one starts before the other. That's because one of them is a little bit tight. I ran them like this for a while and then both of them levelled up with each other. Just to recap, in this series you have seen Plan A, which was to couple the engines using crank pin to crank pin with a sleeve. That didn't work. And as you've just seen in this episode, plan B, which is to couple the engine crankshaft to crank pin, didn't work either. But both of the engines run very well when they're not connected to each other. But all is not lost, I have a plan C, and this one will definitely work. I'm not going to tell you what it is, you'll have to keep watching the series. And my next idea is possibly the most flexible of ideas, because you'll be able to use the engines individually, for instance, to power a large model boat with twin propellers or an even larger model boat with a very large single propeller. So watch the next video and I'll explain what I'm about to do. All I can say is the next idea is the best one by far. But I'll keep you guessing until the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.